guys, my name is Emily, if you haven't seen my face before, and today I'm going to be making a different kind of video for my channel, and this is going to be my top 10 tips for new Christians or new believers in Jesus. For those of you who don't know, I am a Christian, and I definitely wanted to start making more faith-based videos on my channel so I could share that part of my life with you guys. So I'm making this video in mind of people who might be new to Christianity, who don't really know what to do yet about their faith, or people who might be questioning whether or not they want to believe in God, or even people who already do but they just want some tips on how to get closer to God. Regardless of where you are, this video is for you. If you are new to Christianity, I don't want to scare you. I'm not going to try to intimidate you with 38 Bible verses in this video. This is going to be a safe place for anyone who wants to know more about faith and how to really get closer to God. All of the 10 tips that I have might not all apply to you and that is totally fine. Everyone is at a different space in their journey and I am hoping that I can at least help one person with this video and if I can do that then I have done my job. The first tip that I have is that there is no such thing as a perfect Christian. Most people kind of present their lives to be really really good on social media. They might seem like all of their life is put together, that they're super happy, but chances are behind the scenes there's some stuff going on that is not so great about their lives. So you shouldn't be discouraged in thinking that if you're a Christian and your life isn't perfect, that there's something wrong with you because every single person makes mistakes. Everybody has done things that aren't great and no one is a perfect person. So what I'm trying to get at is that none of us are better than another person. The only person who was perfect is Jesus and none of us will ever reach that standard. So you don't have to worry about that girl down the street or that boy down the street that you might know who has seemed to be super close to God all of their lives and really far on their faith journey. That doesn't mean that God loves them any more than he loves you. Which brings me to my next point that you don't have to have your life together before you start following God. I think it's a little bit of a pre-misconception that you have to have everything in line, all your ducks in a row, and you need to be a really great person before you can start following Jesus, which is completely untrue. God knows everything about you regardless of if you already are following him or not. For example, maybe you have a really bad habit that you're trying to break. Maybe you've done something in the past that you feel like makes you unworthy of God's love, which is completely untrue. God loves you regardless of where you are in your life and regardless of what you've done. He loves all of us the same way. And he already knows everything about you and everything that you've done. So you don't have to wait until you are a perfect person, which you will never be, before following him because he wants you as you are. But even though we've all made really bad mistakes, he still understands us and loves us and wants us to go to him for help with those things. The third tip that I have is that it's okay to be confused. I know Christianity can seem very, very complicated because there are so many different types of Christians and churches and denominations and all of this stuff that can kind of make it more confusing. And I know I've personally struggled with this quite a bit of not really knowing what is the right way to be a Christian, what is the right church to go to, all of that kind of stuff. I think we're all different and God doesn't love you any less than someone else who goes to a different church. So find whatever works for you. And if you are confused, ask God for guidance and he will guide you to a place where you need to be. The fourth tip that I have is to talk with God and build a relationship with him. This is something that is very, very important to being a Christian. And if that is, of course, knowing Jesus, knowing God and trying to get closer to them. So I think that it might be a little bit intimidating for some people if you think that talking to God has to be reciting Bible verses and being very formal with him. And it doesn't necessarily have to be like that. Praying to God can be like that if you want it to be. And there are certain times where that may feel right for you. You can talk to God as if he's your father, he's your parent, he's a friend, anything like that. It can be a very casual conversation, which is great. And he's so easy to talk to. So you don't have to worry about messing up or not saying the right words because he just is very happy to be communicating with you and for you to be going to him. You can go to him with any worries that you have or even just to talk about the good things that you have in your life and things that you're thankful for. I know it might feel a little bit awkward to be talking to someone who you can't physically see, but he will be listening to you regardless of if you're saying it in your mind, in your heart, or out loud. So whatever works for you, then I would recommend you start with that and start with a little bit every day and then eventually it'll start to come more naturally too. 
the fifth tip that I have is to read your Bible. Now this is something that I think might be also a little bit intimidating. There are quite a few different translations of the Bible and it is also quite a very large book. So what I would recommend is that you can do a little bit of a research on different translations and see what you like. The Bible that I have is the Christian Standard Version and there are quite a few different ones. You might like some more old school type of language closer to the original Bible and you can find that if you want. There's also a bunch of different more enriched detailed types of versions that you can find online. Before you buy a Bible, I would recommend you reading through the different types of Bibles online and then seeing which type of writing you like and that you'll find it easiest to read. This one is by She Reads Truth and this is quite a thick one. I have some Bible tabs on the side to help me flip through it easier and I really like this one because there's a lot of art for the different books as well as some study guides and there's quite big margins on the sides of the pages for you to write notes. My favorite part about this Bible, on top of all those other things, is that it actually has built-in devotionals. If you aren't familiar with devotionals, it's basically just little insights that the people who put this specific Bible together wrote about, and they connect the verses to their own personal experience, share little stories, and some inspiration for the reader. So all of these things are great, but you don't need all these fancy things in your Bible. Some people just like a really standard, simple Bible, and that is perfectly fine too if that's what you like. If you've never read any part of the Bible before but you want to start, there isn't a wrong place to start reading. It is quite big, so you have quite a few options, which can also be a bit intimidating. Personally, I would recommend starting with the Gospel of John so that you can see how Jesus actually lived, the way he spoke and treated people. Some other people like to read cover to cover. It's totally up to you. There's so many good places to start. You can also follow along with some plans online that are free. And whatever works for you, I would just recommend starting with a little bit at a time. I wouldn't aim to try to finish a book a day or anything like that, or even a chapter might be too much for you. I would just start with maybe a couple verses per day and really trying to reflect on what you've read. That way it isn't too overwhelming for you, and that way you can actually process what you're reading a little bit easier. I don't know if you can hear it, but there is a dog that's right outside my window that I think is trying to bark at another dog. Um... Hopefully everything is okay out there, but anyways, the sixth tip that I have is to find a church. Now this can be a little bit more complicated than it might seem because there are quite a few different churches and different denominations and all that kind of stuff, but again, there isn't one right church. Whatever works for you works for you, and I think the most important thing is that you're in a place that preaches what the Bible says and you feel like you're actually learning and growing and are able to apply what you're learning to your actual life outside of the church. You might be more comfortable with a really traditional church or maybe a more modern church. It's totally up to you and what is best for you. You can also find hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, so many different churches just online. Personally, I love to follow a few different churches through their online live streams. You can look up on YouTube church live stream, online church, church in my city, that kind of stuff. And with your location, of course, that way you can actually find churches that are in your area that are posting online. If you'd rather go through that first before actually deciding to go to a church in person, I think that is a great way to do it. The seventh tip that I have is to get involved with other Christians. This can be done many different ways. A lot of churches have groups for different people of different ages. So if you're a young adult, or if you're a teenager, or even if you're a senior citizen. I think it's a great way to make friends that way that you can encourage each other and you can learn new things from, and it's a great way to meet people. And getting involved with other Christians is also a great way to get out into the community and maybe start helping people together if you aren't really comfortable with doing that kind of stuff by yourself. The eighth tip that I have is to follow Christian influencers, and this is something that might be a little bit more applicable to some people instead of others, but I think it's a great way if you are a really big fan of Instagram or YouTube or any of those things that you can kind of get a regular source of boosting your faith and encouragement while you're scrolling, I think is a great way. That way it's kind of in your subconscious mind when you see stuff like that. And also there's a bunch of people who post things like Bible studies, even questions and answers about their Christianity 
tips and stuff like that for other Christians and just talking about topics that are really important for people who have questions about God or if you're just trying to build your relationship with him. So I have quite a few people that I personally follow. I will list a few channels here but this definitely won't be all of them because I won't have room for all of the people that I follow but here are just a few different options that you guys might have but again I strongly encourage you to do your own research in who you want to follow because there's hundreds of different options for you guys to get some inspiration from. The ninth tip that I have is to start making little changes. There's quite a few things that may seem small that you can do that will actually really help you in the long run. For example, waking up in the morning and just being grateful for something in your life. Maybe you keep a gratitude journal or something like that or next to your bed when you wake up you can just write down something that you're thankful for and thank God for that and that's a great way to start your day as well as maybe you're getting ready and you want to listen to music, maybe pop on a worship song as you're getting ready, stuff like that, or listen to some in the car even. There's lots of different things like that that you can do that really do help you in your relationship with God, even though you might not think it at first. They are great little things to get into, and those are just two examples, but there's so many things that you can do that will actually just make you feel better and really boost your mood. So I would definitely recommend checking some of those things out if you are looking for little ways to boost your faith and boost your mood as well. Those types of things really help me get into a routine. So personally, I do like to do a little bit of gratitude in the morning and before I go to sleep. It really just makes my day feel complete, which leads me into my 10th tip, which is to make God a priority. I think it's really important for your people to be setting time aside every day for God and that doesn't have to be hours upon hours upon hours every single day. As long as you're taking time out of your day for Him, I think that's really what matters. You should have some time that you're spending with Him every day and really just communicating with Him and connecting with Him to build your relationship. And that's one of the best ways that you can start to feel closer to God and he'll start to talk to you in different ways in your life that you'll be more aware of if you spend more time with him. If you do want to start off your Christian journey with a bang and spending an hour talking to Jesus every single day all at once, I think that's great. But personally for me, whenever I was starting out with my Christian journey, I really struggled with dedicating a lot of time to him at first. So I would really recommend starting off small if that's something that you deal with as well. And it's easier to start small and do that every single day than dedicating an hour every single morning to reading your Bible if you've never even done that before. That way it's a lot more manageable for you and you aren't overwhelmed and you're not discouraged by all of these things that you feel like you need to do because spending time with God shouldn't feel like it's a requirement or a chore. It should be something that really makes you feel better and encourages you and that you look forward to. So if you do find like you're dreading reading your Bible or dreading talking to God and spending time with him, maybe start smaller and that way you can kind of work your way through more quality time instead of quantity time with him. And it's a lot easier to make a priority to do that every single day than trying to finish a full book in one sitting. Alright guys, so those are my 10 tips for new Christians. And if you guys have any more tips, feel free, please leave them down below. I would love to hear them and I'm sure anyone else watching would love to hear those as well. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you want to, you can go ahead and leave a like, a comment, or subscribe if you want. And I will see you next time. Thanks guys. Bye. God bless.